Hey everybody, I want to thank you for tuning in again this morning. Uh, I believe that the Lord has something for you today that will be spiritual food and sustenance for us uh, to face the day that lies ahead and also this period that we find ourselves in. So uh, I want to focus our attention for this morning's devotion in the Old Testament. Uh, I want to take a passage there. Now the Old Testament, at the centre of the Old Testament narrative, you've got this whole idea of conquest. This whole idea of conquest. So the people of God uh, are called to take possession of what we know as the promised land. And so in doing that, they are confronted by various enemies. And each of these enemies stand, if you like, as a gatekeeper into a further portion of promise, into a further portion of their inheritance. And so they need to fight their way through uh, to blessing. And so Israel in the Old Testament, uh, they come up across and they they fight a number of enemies. Uh, And war is bloody. It's about life and death. The goal of war uh, in the Old Testament is destruction. And almost every enemy that Israel ever faced Uh, was intent on killing their bodies. Uh, But there was this one that took a different approach. And that's the one I want to share with you today because I believe that that's the same enemy, the same scheme that confronts us today. Because this enemy was intent not on destroying their bodies, but on crushing their spirits. Not on destroying their bodies, but on crushing their spirits. You can read about them in Judges chapter 6. They were called the Midianites. And now the Midianites were like the, the stereotypical sort of school bully. You know, give me your lunch money or I'm going to beat you up and leave you in the, the bin. Uh, and so they came to, to, to the Israelites and here's, here's what they would do. The Bible says in verse 3 of Judges chapter 6 that whenever Israel had sown their seed, sown their crops, the Midianites would come up every year, set their camp against Israel and destroy their crops so that there was nothing to eat for the animals and nothing that would sustain the people. And so verse 6 says that Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Now if you're a farmer you understand this. You understand the back-breaking work that it is. Especially in those days you had to plough the land, you had to sow the seed, you had to water it, you had to till the soil. Your sweat, your heart, your tears, it all went in to this backbreaking work, you cultivate this seed every year, only for the same time these Midianites to come round and destroy it. And this happened every year for seven years, a year's worth of work destroyed in an instant. And the reality is this, my friends, Midian never touched an Israelite body, but they crushed every spirit. Never touched a body, but they crushed every spirit. You see, friends, some battles aren't designed to kill you. They are designed to steal what you need for the next season of your life. The Midianites came after the crops, didn't touch their bodies. They came after what Israel needed to sustain them in the next season of their life. You see, I want you to realise this. We all face all sorts of battles. And you see, the devil doesn't mind you coming out of a battle, my friend, if you leave something that you needed back in the battle. He doesn't mind you coming through if you left something that you need back there. See, he doesn't mind me coming out of a broken home. If my image of marriage is distorted, if my view of the Father is distorted, he doesn't mind me coming through a battle with illness if I've left my trust in the goodness of God back in the battle, back in the situation. He doesn't mind me, friends, coming through relationship heartache if he knows my trust got left behind, the trust that I need to take me into the next season of my life, the the future relationships that I have. If it's left in that battle, the enemy doesn't mind me surviving. If I survive but I'm stripped. And now the thing I needed for my future to take me into the fullness of the promises of God has been left in me. A battle that didn't kill my body, but a battle that crushed my spirit. You know, the devil doesn't even mind if I make it to church and keep turning up every Sunday, get past the hurt, get past people that have annoyed me and and upset me. I can keep showing up on a Sunday. But you see, when my desire to serve again, to lead again, has been left behind in the battle, do you know what, friend? He's won anyway. And so the person that needs to hear my testimony, the person that needs to hear my story, will never hear it because I left it in Midian. You see, friends, Midian won't kill you, but it will take what you need and steal what you need in order to be effective in the next season of your life. You see, the enemy designs some battles not to eliminate us, but in order to impoverish us. As I say, I I survived it, but I survived it stripped. And now I've got nothing to take with me into the days that lie ahead. And so I want to encourage you in this moment that we find ourselves in, 
Don't leave something in this lockdown season that will impoverish you for the next season of your life. You know, I got an email uh, this week, really saddened me from Christian Vision for Men, just to give you a flavour of this. And I'm saddened by the, the fact that since lockdown began on the 23rd of March, pornographic website traffic is up 20%. Now that coincided with these websites also taking away subscription fees and offering free content online. Do you know what that translates to, my friends? An increase on those websites of 800 million clicks per day. 800 million clicks per day. Also showing a massive increase in percentage growth, supermarkets and the content of alcohol that they're putting into homes during a lockdown period. And so friends, be under no illusions. There is a lockdown war on spiritual well-being. There is a lockdown war on sexual purity at this time. There's a lockdown war on self-control and on discipline. And what the devil wants to do, and I want you to catch this, what the devil wants to do is steal something from you now that will sabotage your long-term prospects. And so if you're single at this moment in time, he wants you to leave your purity in Miriam so that your marriage down the track is sabotaged. If you're married now, he wants you to leave your faithfulness in lockdown, your faithfulness in Miriam, so that he can sabotage your home. You see, innocence is being stolen in lockdown all across the world. Why? Because in the future it breeds traffic and it breeds abuse and it breeds a broken gener generation. And so friends, I'm urging you, do not let him steal in this season which you need to survive and sustain you in the next season. And so I encourage you that this morning. Don't surrender today. Really catch this. Don't surrender today which will be your strength tomorrow. And be mindful of the subtle attack. You know, as I say, it's that enemy that will leave you alive, but leave you ineffective because you left what you needed behind. It's a subtle attack. It doesn't destroy you, but it leaves you stripped of something that you need and renders you ineffective in the days that come. Whatever that looks like, perhaps it's your trust in people, your, your ability to engage in relationship again. Maybe it's your faith in God, your, your, your sense that, do you know what, God, I feel like God has let me down and I can never trust him again. I can't commit my life to him. Maybe it's your confidence. Your confidence has been shaken. You've been embarrassed and you know you'll never step out. You'll never put yourself out there again and step into what God's called you to do. Uh, maybe it's your heart. You left your heart in that relationship. It got trampled on. It got crushed. And now you're never prepared to give that again. And so you're missing out on those providential relationships that God has for your life. I don't know what it is for you today, my friend, but I want you to know this. Don't leave it in Midian. Don't leave in lockdown something what you're going to need for tomorrow. I love the words uh, of the Apostle Paul, his young protege Timothy, when he says this. He says, guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Why guard it? Guard it because there is someone out there, friend, that is trying to steal the good deposit in your life. You know, let's look at it this way. Nobody robs an empty house. Nobody robs anything that doesn't have value. And so that means the deposit that's in you is valuable. You have seed in you that has the potential to, to bear a kingdom harvest, a harvest for the kingdom of God, destroy the works of the enemy. You are a threat to the enemy today. I want you to catch that. You're a threat to him. And so don't let the enemy steal what God has deposited in you today. Don't leave anything in lockdown, which is going to be your strength for tomorrow. I want to tell you to this with all my heart. Hold on today. Hold on. Don't leave anything in Midian. Don't leave anything in lockdown. What you prize now will preserve you in the future. What you prize now will preserve you in the future. And so don't give the devil a foothold in your life. Don't let him steal that seed, that good deposit that's in you. And so I encourage you today, hold on. Lay hold of God. And by the help of his Holy Spirit, keep purity. Keep your eyes fixed in the road ahead. And you know what? We will come out of this season stronger, better together and carrying something that will propel us into another dimension, into another blessing in the days that lie ahead. You know what? It's been good to share with you this morning. Uh, if we can help you as always in any way, why not leave a comment down below or get in touch via the email at support at gpastures.co.uk and we'll do anything we can to help you in this time, friends. But have a great day. Be encouraged and go in God's strength.